Hi everybody! Hi. Hey hey! On the show today we caught up with Brent from Married at First Sight. Yeah, just bag up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Pump your thighs up. Uh, Richo joins us from Channel Seven. Yeah, um, talk about the Winter Games. As we know, uh, at the moment, if you go to the supermarket, you can't get certain things. Mm. We really, we really um, zero in on the exact things people can't get and how it's affecting their lives in a negative mm, manner. Very negatively. Um, why amateur rescue missions are a bad idea? Yep. Some cracking stories there. And it was a struggle for us to get to work today. More than usual. Oh, <laughs> so we bitch about it a, a lot. lot. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Um, I've never been a bird owner. Sean, you were a bird trainer. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Pigeon fancier. My dad has uh, many lofts at home at the moment. There's mm. a hawk just getting around it all the time at what the moment. What do you mean? What? hawk's trying to get hold of some yeah. of these uh, parrots. Anyway, it's a whole story. Well, Sean, this is a story about a parrot. Well, blow me over with a feather, Nate. I know. Okay. We've got uh, an interview with a parrot. Hello. And then what happened? <laughs> Four fire crews were sent to rescue a woman who got stuck 4.5 metres up a tree while trying to save her parrot. Now, okay, the parrot can fly, right? You know what I mean? Parrots don't get stuck in trees. Parrots go parrots. up trees to get away from women. <laughs> also, <laughs> I'm just going to put it, it's four and a half metres, right? That does not require... 5.4 metres. Four fire crews. Uh, yes. Uh, four so, fire crews, really? Firefighters used a ladder to rescue the woman in the southwest of England. Dorset and Wiltshire Fire Service said while they understood the emotional attachment to pets of any species, it was a reminder of the danger of people taking matters into their own hands and attempting amateur rescue missions. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. How many times have you climbed up a tree back to in the day? To save a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> thought, how the hell am I going to get down from here? Or got onto a well, roof or something. it's pretty easy because gravity does most of the work. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get you down at some stage. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's always better not to rescue someone or something because just in case you can't. That's right. Because <laughs> in all likelihood, you can't. Oh, yeah, no. Can you not. sure? Well, it is better just to let them perish. Remember that time I, you nearly died? Yeah, well, I, I uh, was an amateur rescue because I thought I was Trevor Hendy and I'd just run down to the beach, take yes. my shirt off and just swim out there and save someone. Yeah. And, and, I, and then you needed I was, to be saved. I don't know how I survived, actually. That was amazing stuff. And we say that lightly. No, no, he literally yeah, thought yeah, he was going to die. Um, then I think it was two days later when I went back out in the surf and then there was this... Um, there was this Korean guy and uh, I was paddling in. I could see that he was caught in this rip and it was. Uh, I thought I'll do the right thing again and I didn't really want to go near him because of my previous Because you remember experience. that yes. you had nearly died doing Yeah, yeah. That. Anyway, I said just to – I was – Telling him to grab my legs, and I was on my surfboard. Anyway, he was dragging me back. I really wanted to kick him that hard. To get him <laughs> Denise is in Spearwood. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi, Good, Denise. Denise. Talk to us about your amateur rescue mission. Um, we had this little um pet, pink and grey Galar George, mm. and I I had little children at the time. Well, anyhow, it got out of the cage, and it was only young. And it flew off, and the kids were hysterical. Oh, oh it's no. flown across the park. Oh, gosh. So anyhow, off we went over the park, yeah. and I could see this pink and grey up in this tree, mm. this huge tree. So I'm going, come on, George, come, get down, George, get down. And anyhow, I saw this bottle <laughs> um, near the tree, so yeah. I'm throwing the bottle up in the tree to make the bird fly or, you know, at least come down. Yes. I'm throwing it up, throwing it up, the kids are screaming, throwing it up, while the bottle come down and hit me on the head. It really knocked me out unconscious. And the bird flew off. Well, by that time, the kids are absolutely beside themselves. And I'm effing from uphill and down. We look like the Griswolds. Yes. So I... So we walked home, and all of a sudden I hear says, "Hello, George. Hello, George. <laughs> the bird is across the road in my neighbour's tree." And I walked over, picked it up, and <laughs> took it home after being knocked out. So were you were you throwing the bottle at the right bird? Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was the a right completely bird. random <laughs> thing. Right. Right. They do all look the same, to be fair. <laughs> but <laughs> right. imagine that it's bird just going, bird. "What the hell is that?" <laughs> Hey, guys, check out this nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's George's owner. <laughs>
Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If, it's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. We had the tragic tale of a lady who um, tried to retrieve her parrot that was up a tree. Yeah. Um, and then she got stuck and the four fire crews had yeah. to come and get her, which I don't, that seems overkill to me. Yes, they <laughs> have warned people against amateur rescue missions, said leave it to the professionals. Um, mm-hmm. Let's go to Kath in Forestfield. Hi, Kath. Good morning, guys. How are you going? Hi, Wonderful, Kath. Kath. Um, was it you that was trying to be helpful or someone trying to it, help you? Yes. Yes, I thought I was doing a service. Mm-hmm. Um, I was renting a house in Mount Pleasant many years ago and um, I found what I thought was a rare marsupial, a baby, mm-hmm. uh, yes. in the backyard. Yes. So I rushed it to the vet, um, all concerned because it looked very unwell, wasn't oh. moving too well. Oh. Um, it was a field mouse. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, which they don't look like mice that what, people keep as pets. What did it, you What did you think it might have been? I I don't know, but it had like really cute, big, round ears, and I was like, oh my god, I found this obviously a, a new species. <laughs> I found it. Yes, <laughs> and it's yes. my job to make sure it lives. Yes. When funny. I presented it, I said, look, I found this rare marsupial in my yard, this rare and marsupial. she looked at it and just went, oh, it's a field mouse. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah. Yeah, a bit embarrassing. Great right. job, yeah. Kath. I've never seen a field mouse. Thank you. I, yeah. Thank what, you. what happened to the field my, mouse after Put that? Put it back in the field. I, I wouldn't like to know because it was very unwell and it was a field mouse, so mm. I, I think it probably went to mouse heaven. Wow. Mm. You're a fair with it for a night. You once you mm. found out it wasn't rare. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no worries. Chuck it in the bin. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was on the field mouse, really. It should have been rarer. Thanks, Cav. Katie's in North Frio. Hello. Hi. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Talk to us about your yeah, amateur rescue mission. What happened? I worked on super yachts back in my heyday, and I, I went out for a cheeky one vino. You know how that always goes. Yes. When really you should just say ten. <laughs> uh, we went. I went with my girlfriend. We were working on the boat. Our partners were on the boat. Snuck out. Had way too many drinks. Came back. I was on the passer. I lost my thumb. And uh, it was my favourite Javianas. It was like, can't, can't let this go. So we were rolling around the boat, drunk as scum, trying to find the boat hook, trying to find the net. Found the net, found the hook, got the thong. Yeah. But as I hooked the thong, I fell in the port. Yes. And then my mate had to rescue me from the port. Uh, it was quite precarious. Actually, now I look back, very dangerous. It was the middle of winter in Monaco. And I could have nearly died. She was, like, struggling to get me out. Like, yeah, yeah, but you got your thong back, Katie. Yeah, so, now, you know, did you get your thong back? I did. But the worst part was that we were like, okay, don't say a word. Because we were all getting such... Uh, crap from our partners about, you know, going for a one wine and us getting sozzled. And then I, I didn't realise, like, we just won't say a single thing. You know, no one will know. Yeah. I was wet. It, it was fine. <laughs> just snuck into bed. Next day, the whole crew are watching the CCTV play <laughs> from every angle of the boat. The side deck, the fore deck. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> and my husband, like, my, he's my husband now, but he was just like, oh. oh. That's hey, why you don't go for one wine, Katie. Um, how big was the boat that you were working on, and 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 how did it work for you? Sixty-two meter uh, boat. I worked on the yachts for fifteen years. That boat I worked for twelve years with my wow. now husband. Um, we absolutely loved it. It's the uh, yeah. It's, it's like Below Deck's not as I, yeah, I was yeah. about to bring up Below Deck. So, did you meet your husband while you were both working on that boat? No, actually, Valentine's Day is our anniversary. He asked me out when we were 16. Oh, um, wow. Oh, so you both went over there to work on the boats together? <laughs> yeah, we went oh. over together at about 21 and, um, yeah, joined the boats and worked our way up from the bottom to the top and travelled European, Caribbean, uh, yeah, whatever. What, oh, what nationality was the owner, Katie? Uh, British, this one, the one that I was working for. Yeah, British guy. Wow. Um, Absolutely property, minted. Um, developer. Mm. And most important question of the entire story, what colour was that thong? <laughs> <laughs> Black with a, with a little diamond. I've oh. got those and I know exactly what you mean. I would have rescued yeah, it too. Yeah, of course you would. Now it's got yep. bling on it. <laughs> Good work, Katie. Thank you. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. On Married at First Sight, um, Tamara and Brent, they've really hit that sweet spot in their marriage.
Who about brought up money? About career Who stuff. Who brought up money? They asked and me I when it like came to something like that. Because I'm an independent that, woman. They go, you know what, shut up and I don't need together, to talk to you right you now. You don't want that. You want to look after someone and because I don't need to be looked after. I don't want to well. look after you. I don't need to baby anyone. Get over yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. very interesting. I think Intimacy Week's going well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're happy to speak to both of them, but we've just just got Brent and I think I'm okay with that. We've yeah, got, got, got the one we want. Hi, Brent. <laughs> Hey guys, how are we? Brent, uh, good, Brent. Uh, look, tense. I really like you, Brent. I mm. think you're great. I appreciate that. Well done. Well, going on the show, you know that people are going to be uh, put into a category. Obviously, we've had villains all the way through. So, yeah. when you um, agreed to be on the show, what was the trepidation like? So, I just thought to myself, I'm just going to be uh, look as genuine as I possibly can and just do my thing. I had no 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 game plan. Didn't want to be a villain or or this or that. I just Playing it by ear. Now, Brent, are you? Is everyone getting a fair edit this season? In your opinion, because we know, especially yeah. during Bryce and Melissa's season, that you know we all got a certain perception of them. And then when we came up uh, suddenly, and everyone during the series was saying, "No, that's a correct edit." And then after the series, people were going, "Oh no, they got badly edited." Mm. So far, is it pretty on point to what your experience was? Yeah. Look, I, I've got strong views about this. Let's be honest. If you've done something or you said something then you've done it and said it. Do you know what I mean? There's only so much they can possibly edit. And I think it's time that everyone kind of takes responsibility for that as well. But, um, it's, but it's been taken in con- yeah. different contexts. I, mean, I think, that's, is, I think that's really just, unfair of people who've been in the and past. And it's often just with it. expressions. So they like yes. they might use an yeah. expression where you pulled a face and, and insert it into a different, as though you were reacting to something that somebody said, even though you weren't. You know, that, I think um, that's the sort of editing that people often... That could that could definitely be a thing. Yeah, yeah. that could definitely be a thing. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, there's, there's no, no secret there. Yeah. yeah. But oh. you're right. If they, if they say something or you're having yeah. an argument, you know, it's yeah. pretty yeah. cool. Like, like all the stuff that Tamara was saying mm. about, you know, the retail workers should never go out with one and, <laughs> never and ever. all that sort of stuff. Because it is really confusing, and I do agree with you, Brent. Um, watching it, it must have been confusing for you because suddenly Tamara shows all these, like, you know, just like she's she's normal and, and nice and fun, and then you see her yeah. talk about all this pretentious stuff and materialistic stuff, and I just think, my God, if you, like if you if she was to meet the guy of her dreams and he wasn't driving the hotted up car, mm, yeah. Because uh, I was going to ask her if you were to meet the guy of your dreams tomorrow and he wasn't driving a hotted up car, he wasn't wearing Gucci or Louis Vuitton and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but yet he was, but yet he was saving up money for a house mm. so you could have a, a, a steady future. Would you would that that be attractive to you? And I think the answer she would have said was yes. But I really deeply think that the answer would have been no. What do you think, Brent? Yeah, I, I think she's caught in between. Look, I think, to be honest with you, I think if if it was someone that was uh, generally a good person and had had a, a good career driven, and, and yes, but saving for a house and stuff like that, then definitely. Uh, I just think it comes out very wrong in the way she delivers it, um, mm-hmm. and she's very well aware of that now too. <laughs> I bet she is. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, well, it's an experiment. <laughs> yeah, it's but you know what the funny thing is, Brent, you would have been laughing because we talked about you two from the get-go because mm. of the first night. You know, you sat there and you said what so you did, funny. and she mm. um, she had a crack at you and anyone to do with retail as well. We've the way spoken you hold about a knife. it many times. Yep. What was your the reflection way- of that <laughs> night like? Uh, I mean, it was hard to relive again, but... Um, uh, I just, I'm lucky I had enough patience and resilience to break through. And I knew I kind of would. I was, I know she's going to like realize that we're going to have some fun together and it's going to be okay. And it kind of got to a point where she admitted that, you know, okay, she was wrong in saying that and it wasn't the right way to go about it. And yeah. And then basically she was hangry. Uh, She was quite, uh, you know, (laughs) uh, you know, and you don't want to mess with tomorrow when she's hangry. Yeah. Okay. We found that out early. Um, Now talk to me, Brent. What do you, what are your thoughts about the experts? Do you actually value their opinions on anything? I mean, look, we, we don't get to sit with them and have a proper, sure. proper long, long sessions and, and, and whatever else, but it's enough to at least have them there to call you out on your faults or when you're doing something wrong because it's really important. Sometimes we are wrong. We're human. People are doing things wrong, and we need an outside perspective on that and yeah. to be told kind of what direction to head in. Um, so it does it, it does uh, mean a bit to us to, to hear that. Too. Even though they're manufacturers of evil and, yes. <laughs> uh, and, and like, you know, yeah, and know. all this sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, but yet I do have seen a shift this year that they are actually calling people out. They're looking at the footage. Yes. And they're actually, because they used to look at the footage and then not bring that up. And into, they, yeah, pretend yeah. they'd never seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are, there are at least some calling people out about that sort of stuff. But Brent... Hey, can we just quickly go away from maths right now? We want to talk about your yep. life in Dubai when you had okay. your um, company. 
Uh, tell us about yeah. that. What was it like? Because it looked like you just built something amazing over there. Yeah, well, I, look, I had a business partner, and it was his event. Uh, it was his first. When I met him in the first seven months I was there, he taught me so much, and we grew together, and it was amazing. Then closer to the end, I started building my own things, but yeah. we all worked together. Um, it was such a different life. It taught me so much. It was it was just an incredible journey, um, and it changed my life being there. It really did. It was a great experience. Unfortunately, it did uh, it ended a little bit earlier than I. I had hoped for. So. Yeah, with COVID, and obviously you had to coming coming back. But so, so what we saw on the um, yeah, the first stuff of seeing you on maps was um, a lot of uh, a lot of bloody wealth, and then a lot of <laughs> uh, stars, like superstars around the world. You got to meet along the journey. Is that all real? Because. Yeah. I mean, real. To, ha, what level of realness is that? Because sometimes you get a photo with someone and yeah. you don't have a conversation with them, but then, yes. you know, you can make it look like your best mates type of stuff. Was yeah, that- no, I, I wouldn't call best mates. No, no. Let's not pretend I'm best mates with, the, with these celebrities. But no, we, we ran a lot of major, major events. We won quite a few awards. So we, we'd either, you know, work with agencies and bring them over and they would appear, perform. Uh, but honestly, the one with Will Smith, we got this chat to him. We got all that to have a big dinner. All together, he was, he is pretty much the most amazing guy that you see on TV <laughs> that he is in real life. That cool. was fun. That life must seem like a dream to you now, yeah. does it? Almost, but I'm not going to let it go. Yeah. I, still, I still have that, you know, in the back of my mind at all times. Hey, Brent, have you I, been I, to I the Burj? Imagine. Have you done a party at the Burj or anything? <laughs> a party? No. Have I been there? Yes. We did do an event there that was on uh, like a mid-level in the Burj there. Um, and we used to go there quite a bit. But yeah, I actually have never... Been to the top. Yeah, right. <laughs> is that a penthouse? Is, you know, the Burj Al Arab? Oh, so, so, yeah, in the comp- super tall. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, right. Yeah. There's two. There's two. There's yeah. the Burj Al Arab and then there's the uh, Burj Khalifa. Yeah, right. Mm. Hey, Brent, when you left that life from because of COVID and came back to Australia, I'm guessing, you know, did you have to move back in with your parents or something like that? Did you go <laughs> from the come down. this amazing life to moving back into your old bedroom? What happened? I did. No, I was sleeping on the couch at my parents' house, and it was great. And they, and because I'd been gone for so long, yeah. they um they were happy to have me. But it obviously didn't last long. I'm sure they wanted me out in a few months. Yeah, um, that's so funny. So I, I, I spent time with my dog and, and stayed there for a little bit and then went, nope, and, and went straight back to Bondi. So. Yeah, no. But, but yeah, that, right. That's so funny, though. You come back from this amazing life and then you're sleeping on the couch. You're waiting for your parents, <laughs> yes. waiting for your parents to go to bed so you can, <laughs> so you can lie down. <laughs> yeah. what, a, what, what a plot twist. There was even one time I messaged my mum saying, hey, I'll be coming home late. She's like, but you realise you're... You're 33, right? You don't need to art. You don't need to art. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, oh right. Brent. All right. So well, we're going to let you go now, Brent, but quick vote around the room. Brent and Tamara, are they together? I'm going to say no. No, no, but I think Brent no. is going to find somebody because he's a really stand-up oh, Brent's good great. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Good luck, Brent. We very, very much be together. What's that? What? What? It's still very much be together. Yeah, no, you could be. We understand that you could be, but you're not. You could be, but you're not. (laughs) 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 You know why? Heaps of things could happen, She's a nice girl, but you can do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, Brent, you're not together. And if you are, it won't last. Love you, Brent. Bye. Bye, guys. (laughs) Nathan, Dad and Sean. Straight over to Beijing we go for a bit of a combination omelette and we're talking about the uh, the Winter Olympics. Our mate Richo, he's been sampling everything a buffet's mm. had to offer over there and also watching the games themselves. G'day, Richo. <laughs> Nate Naff, Shorty Mac. Oh, Richo in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Richo, where are you right now? He's in the house. <laughs> I am in the house, and I'm at the bottom of the slope-style course, yeah. of course. Uh, the final on, uh, not too far away, the women's final in freestyle skiing in slope-style. The superstar that is Eileen Gu trying to add a gold medal to her unbelievable gold medal in the big air. She's the biggest star in these uh, yeah. sports. Uh, raised in America, but uh, from Chinese parents. Representing China, a beautiful blend between... The next generation and uh, all the Chinese people are right behind her. I'll be desperate for an interview. I'm going to ask her for an interview. If she says no, I'll say, oh, come on.
Come on, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. she's the one that everyone in America is calling a traitor, right? Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, so yes. She, she was so, born and bred yeah, in true. America. So, yeah. hey, Richard, have you found out, because apparently to be an athlete for the for any games in China, you have to not have dual citizenship. You have to just be a Chinese um, yeah, that's citizen. True. So did any digging that's around exactly, about yeah, her so citizenship? Yeah, there's a lot of controversy about that. It was interesting. You know, one of the press conferences, she's she's getting pressure from America saying, hang on, you're born and bred and we've, right, we've in effect, invested in you to get you to this point, yet you're representing China. Oh, yeah. So she's copying it on that angle. And then on the other angle, the Chinese people are saying, hang on, you're representing China, yet you've got the ability to um, engage in Instagram and Twitter and the like, which is not necessarily available for yeah, right. all of the Chinese people. So they're... And I she's like, we'll be she's better at skiing then. It's very interesting. First of all, can I acknowledge the come on Eileen call because I reckon it deserved better. Oh. Secondly, oh, did it? when you... <laughs> <laughs> when you, were you know what? Yes. I was very, very disappointed. The lack of maybe, you know, well, you know, Nat's too young. She doesn't even understand. But I would have thought, <laughs> Shawnee Mac, you'd be all over that, your old grandpa. I mean, well, I'm, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure the... you, but I'm the oldest of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just ignoring that. I'm ignoring it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Richo, last night we were watching, obviously, the aerial skiing last night. Um, Laura Peel in action oh. made it through to the final, only just with her hands down when she, you know, that last jump that she got her from the semis into the final itself. We all got through that together. Then she didn't pull off the perfect uh, the perfect jump. When you were watching it, how bloody high did it seem like she went? I thought she went into the atmosphere she went that bloody high. Oh, my God. How crazy is that sport? Yeah. When you're that... I mean, we were literally 20 metres away from where they land. The thump of the back of their head when they keep uh, landing on their back or back yeah. slapping as they like. And then what about uh, the Chinese ski that went over oh. her head and, oh. and looked like she landed on her neck? I thought she was snapped her neck. It is crazy, crazy courage. The men on tonight, and they'll even go higher, um, it is a scary sport. Yeah. I, you know, the admiration I've got for Lydia Lassala just grows every time I see that event and the fact that she was able to win not so, only gold but gold and bronze and yeah. uh, break the world record. She's a freak. Abby Harrigan did it with a broken leg. Is that right? Uh, no, that was, that was a in different the, sport, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah that yeah. was in the slope style that I'm seeing today. Yeah. So she got a fracture in her fibula yeah. and competed this. yesterday. What are these? What are these? kids doing them today. And, and the med- medics looked at her and said, yeah, you're all right to go. Yeah, your leg's broken. Well, yeah, yeah, that bone, f- it's yeah. not a weight-bearing bone, so oh, you can you can walk on though. it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it not hurts. Like, oh, okay. Hurt. Yeah. Oh, okay, big tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had one, so I know. <laughs> so, so, Richo, last night when you it's got done like when you were doing the interview with Laura afterwards, oh. how hard was that to do? Oh. Because you know how devastated she is, current world champion, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, and then finding oh, the right questions doing, or s- stuff to yes. say to her. Oh, I've been doing too many of them. That's mm-hmm. the bloody concern. I mean, I, when you hear, especially in these Olympics where there's no family around, because yeah. normally the family uh, get around them and help them with a whole lot of that. You know that they're, you know, they're one out in the goal square, if you like. All their family are, are stuck in Australia. Oh, it breaks your heart. You know, look, I was a dud athlete that wanted to be an Olympian and wasn't good enough. So I know the time, you know, the time and effort required to be an Olympian. She's a triple Olympian, two times world champion. I mean, for us mere mortals, I look at her with such awe. But she was just devastated. And you know that there's no words that you can say that can console her. You've just got yeah. to try to help her through. You know, because she yeah. said she was, you know, determined to do an interview. She wanted to send a message out there, but. Oh, it's heartbreaking stuff, yeah, isn't, isn't it? it? And yeah. I mean, even the fact that she, you get one go at it in the final, that's it. Oh, get no. One and done. Like, there's no margin for error whatsoever, is there? Oh, it's ruthless, isn't yeah. it? And well, we see, say, in a half pipe, Scotty Jones had best of three, yes. he let it rip, and then so his second one ended up being his best score. Yep. This was, by the time they got to that super final, one jump for a medal. Yeah. It feels right for an Olympics point of view, because that's what the Olympics is all about, isn't yes. it? delivering on the on the biggest stage and the one-off occasion you get. So I feel it, and I think it's right, but at the same time, it's bloody rude. Yeah, that's, it's, it's great yeah. if you pull it off. Like, yeah. if you're the one that wins, yeah. it's brilliant. You go, this yeah. is perfect. But, you know, when if you do miss the landing or whatever, you go, oh, geez, I'd love another oh, go at that. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Richard, what time have you been getting up in oh. the morning and what time have you been going um, like back to your room and stuff like that? And remember, you're not speak, speaking to yeah. the missus. You're telling us the truth. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep in mind that keep in mind we're living in a bubble. Yeah. So I've, we've got one restaurant we can go to. We're in the same, uh, so, and you can only go to your hotel to and then to the Olympic venue. So it's been. I've been waking up at stupid o'clock, and I've been going to bed a little later than that. Um, but no complaints at all. Smile on my face. Uh, feel very lucky that I'm here. But a, it's bloody bloody cold. Well, how hot is it in Perth today? Uh, thirty eight. What are we yeah. dealing with today? Uh, thirty eight degrees. I get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you freeze. Hot. I was watching you freeze your box off yesterday. Yeah. God, it was funny. Well, last night, Elisa Camplin's beanie was frozen. <laughs> like you said, there was ice on the outside of her beanie, and you go, yeah, it is a bit cold, isn't it? <laughs> I, threw, I threw a little bit of dinker up down in, in, into my jocks just to try to warm myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, you know, Rachel. My, uh, frozen plums aren't fun. <laughs> They are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be 38 pretty much all week here, Rich. Yeah. Just so you know. Well, it's minus 32 right now, so a little 70 32. degree turnaround between the two of us. Oh, I, love it. I cannot even comprehend no, minus how cold. 32. No. I, I, I think that. Oh, hang on. I, What's going on here? We've got his DJ. Hey! Keep it down, we're on air to Nova. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'll be dragged away by the authorities. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Tell you what is a nightmare at the moment. The shops. The shops, Sean. Yeah, I go there every day. I'm a Brian Morris of my local area. Do you have friends? Do you have shop friends? Oh, I always acknowledge the security guy at um, oh, Woolies. Oh, yeah, like yeah. The no, one that stopped you from stealing that uh, time. No, that was at Coles. No, no it never catch me. I'm pretty <laughs> quick. <laughs> That's oh, why I can't Coles. go back to Coles. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to Coles and every time I go through, I just think, have I paid? I keep, I keep thinking to myself. <laughs> That's pretty full on. Well, I mean, the good news is there's nothing for you to steal this time. So yeah, okay. yeah, literally yeah, shelves are bare. It's old Mother Hubbard's cupboard in oh, there. Oh, big time. <laughs> so um, when the pandemic first you know, was happening and yes. then they were like locking down, like you know, the the mints and the yes, pasta because of rice panic and buying on those stuff. Ac- uh, those and occasions. the toilet paper. Well, you know, if you if you got like an eight pack of toilet paper or whatever, you're fine. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. if you're yeah. alone, like, I'm not a, I'm not a, like a a mince person. Like I don't really. Even though every time I go to Coles, they, they offer go, me hey, exclusive Nathan, access to the, the mince cage. cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is lovely. Um, but, yeah, like, and then pasta, I don't need it. So it never really affected me. But this time around, because of this bloody um, issue with the railway line, apparently it's going to be um, reopened today. Re-opened today. Mm-hmm. But, it but it's be, like a five-day trip. But there's a backlog, trip. exactly, yeah, that's it, right. It could it's, be days and days, yeah. and days like, like a week and a half, two weeks maybe before everyone gets their, their stuff back in. But not, now I'm now I'm being affected. Oh, um, okay, what's happened? I can't get my brand of mayonnaise, um, Hellman's <laughs> whole so- egg mayonnaise. I'm sorry for your suffering. And Hellman's. Hellman's, yeah. You put me on to... Yes. The other roses, mayonnaise. Roses, yeah. chilli and coconut. Oh, well, that is true. You know, I do. I like tried to find that the other day, couldn't you get it. You can't get it anywhere mm. anymore. Like, everyone stopped stocking it. Mm. It's like, oh, we'll, we'll make the best thing and not sell mm. it. Oh, great idea. Good business model. Before before that one, there was another mayonnaise you put us onto as well. I reckon it was a Heinz number that said oh, the, the best. Seriously good. <laughs> seriously good mayonnaise. <laughs> You're going through the list, mate. But I feel oh, like that was a bit up itself. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Nathan's mission in life to constantly recommend different mayonnaise. And if anyone brands. does know a great mayonnaise, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm looking for a new one now. Can't get one yeah. because I cannot get my Hellman's mayonnaise. So that, so that there is, it's it's stopped me in my tracks because mm. like I make a great sandwich that needs that mayonnaise. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, um, oh, Jordan's extremely nutty um, granola because uh, it's extremely nutty. And I can't find a bag of that anywhere to save my life. And also, also, also. <laughs> Are we just um, going through your shopping list at this capsicum point? Capsicum <laughs> strips, like the Mar- roasted. roasted capsicum strips. I thought you got a big one from Costco. That no, would- Sean, that's what I remembered. I, like, so it's been a couple of weeks since I haven't been able to get my roasted capsicum strips. And then I looked in the back of my pantry and there was like literally a keg of it that I got from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it out like, oh, like Lion King. <laughs> so you're good for capsicum it's even strips. Too, yeah, it's even too big to stand up in my fridge. It has to lie down like a keg of beer. <laughs> well, Cosy rolls all around. The uh, shortage has well and truly hit book club recently. Oh, what's happening? Oh, would be. When um, uh, the hostess, Shannon, whose job it is to cater for everybody on, on when it's your night, you do everything. And uh, she said, this is really hard because 
There was hardly any cheese in the Simon Johnson cheese room. Oh, my gosh. Not the oh, Simon when Johnson that, cheese room. When book club is so severely affected because there's not enough cheese in the Simon Johnson cheese room, you know things are tough. Can I just Simon say? Simon Johnson up the road. Yeah, just up there. <laughs> it's got just, a whole cheese room, Sean. Can I just it's amazing. Say, um, is no one safe? I know. I know. When, when, Pray for book club, everybody. When the, when the uppity class <laughs> exactly. being affected. Mm-hmm. What's next? Are they not going to be able to get... Caviar. <laughs> imagine not being able to get caviar, Sean. I, I like, couldn't. No, wait, I can't no, imagine. Some people in some suburbs are listening right now that are, can't even comprehend not being able to wipe caviar on a cracker this morning. For, <laughs> they're they're, having, sorry, to, sorry, they're having to use it to wipe their bum, Nathan. There's no toilet paper. <laughs> thousand apologies. They're not wiping cracker. The help wiping cracker. <laughs> Who wouldn't want fish eggs to start the day? Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Ali, we're talking about the things we can't get at the shop specifically right now that's hurting our lives. Really impacting you. How are you going? Uh, I haven't been able to get my hands on a bottle of Kewpie mayo. It's very and mayonnaise it's, heavy, these stories are I, killing me. I think we really, yeah. think we really stumbled onto something. Yeah, I just, I, uh, <laughs> a guy asked cut. me about that when I saw him at the shops on Sunday. I said, what are you yeah. doing here? And he goes, I'm looking for Kewpie mayonnaise. So is that the, I, is that the thing? Is, have you not tried Kewpie mayo? Oh, it's terrific. Yeah, it. It's yeah. terrific. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh, you got some? Thank you bring it in for Ali? <laughs> <laughs> That's it? what we are talking about, what you're you. really missing in these supply chain dark times. Breezing Calm, Scott. Hello. Hey. Now, Hi, Bree. It's, Bree. Your mum's been badly impacted, has she, Bree? Yeah, that really has. My mum, um, she's devastated because she can't get mayo, uh, not mayonnaise. She just got mayonnaise on my breakfast. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she can't get, excuse me, she can't get domestic, like bleach. Oh. How much does she use? Did she go through a bit? A lot. Yeah. She's got a problem. Um, <laughs> I've bought her other brands and they just aren't cutting it apparently. She just wants the good old trusted cheap Coles domestic. Yeah. yeah. Bree, I find that really bizarre when I was, uh, when my, uh, Mrs. does a shopping list. I go to places and she won't take it from anywhere other oh, than, say, be- let's say, that one has to be from Coles. It can't oh, be from the, any it's, other it's thing. These, it's all the same. It's these cleaning people. They've got, mm. their, they've got their, um, you know, their niches yeah. of yeah. what they found can't and what they lines. trust. Um, is she okay? How's she going with that, with that she, domestic? She actually cried the other day <laughs> when I came back and said, like, I can't find it. I've been to three different shops, Mum, and I can't She cried. She said she that. Cried. <laughs> That's something Nothing that I will never up. do. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Thank you, Bree. If anyone's seen a bottle of Domestos sent to any of the yeah. shops, please let us know. Hey for Bree's mum. Uh, Tash is in Thornley. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tash. Oh, Hi, Tash. Tash. What are you really missing? I'm missing French onion dip. <laughs> French onion dip. You know they don't have French onion soup packet either? I saw that last night. They didn't have that. I know. <laughs> I see, I know. Yeah, well, then you can make your own, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But you know I what? Know. You're contending with the generation of our parents who yes. put it in everything because it's the right. secret ingredient yeah, that they is, all know about. It is my comfort. It is my comfort food. And I'm sad now that I don't have it and I don't have my comfort food for when I'm sad. So it's just a vicious cycle. I yeah, so, so you're sad because you can't get it and Gosh. then you can't treat that sadness with French onion exactly. dip. So you just, it's a spiral downwards, Tash, isn't it? is there always it's a French really onion dip in your fridge, is there? Yes, there is. Always, every single week. And I what do we dip into it? Are you a cracker girl or, or carrot, carrot sticks? sticks? What do you do? I usually do carrot sticks or broccoli, but when I'm really sad, then I go for the crackers. Yeah, oh, okay. bag wow. of Jats crackers. Um, have yeah. you got a partner, Tash? I do. I bet you every time he looks in the fridge and sees French onion dip, he's going to be Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Apparently, the Transcontinental Railway Line will be opening up today, which yep. means our shop shelves will start to fill up probably from the end of the week. But we're knowing that th- we've heard that thousands of people are affected by the yeah. mayonnaise shortage. It's yeah. amazing that what you about think the about shortage? all the mayonnaise and stuff. And Nathan, you brought up many mayonnaises. This <laughs> but we don't have our own WA flavour in the mayonnaise area. And this is something. This is Nathan, something. This could be it. Yes. Make our own mayonnaise. Yes. Well, we've just finished with the Novavax. We could well, call now it. We've got some time on our hands. Wayanaise. <laughs> no wayanaise. No wayanaise. <laughs> it's amazing. People say no way. It's way-anaise. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we've. Uh, there's a business idea. Entrepreneur copyright. Nathan. Uh, yeah, copyright. That's our copyright. idea. Copyright. Copyright. Uh, Melinda's in Harrisdale. Hello. Hi. 
Hi, Hi Melinda. Melinda. Now, how are you being impacted? Um, I can't find cheesels anywhere. <gasps> Sweetheart. Cheesels. Really? Can I tell you, cheesels. I cannot remember the last, last time, time I, I bought, bought a cheesels. box of cheesels. <laughs> So but it's not us that strip the shelves by. They really no. are there, Mel. How often do you eat them, Mel? Look, not often, but it is my go-to chip. So is it one of the things where you've always got them in the pantry and just might walk past and grab a, a, just a, a single chisel uh, occasionally? Exactly. Just to get exactly. She just wants to put the bling on her packet. Once you open that packet, you've got to eat them all. Of course oh, you okay, do. Right. Mel, the interesting thing, when you go down the, the chip aisle, which I was down yesterday, mm-hmm. it seems really busy. I didn't see specifically the cheesels. I didn't look for them myself. But are you saying you haven't been able to find them in any of the main retailers? Absolutely. Our um, chip aisle at our local Woolworth is yep. absolutely bare. Is it? <laughs> Now, it's I'm, really I'm bad. going to my Harris, Woolworths. You need to come up to um, Palmyra. <laughs> I'm going to my Woolworths today in Inglewood, and I'll see if there's a box, if there's a box of cheeses. And then you I'll can ship them to me, all right? Yes. I, no, okay, I will, yeah, I yeah. I do find it funny, and am, am, am I wrong in assuming this? Is, is, is cheesels the only chips that come in a box? Burgerings. No, no, burgerings no. come in a packet. Is there a one? Twisties come in a packet. Sea sold. No, that's uh, something you put on your... And I'm just talking about the, the, the Samboy, the cheese. Yeah, you know I mean? the, yeah, the, yeah. Like, none of the fancier things. Cheesels is the only thing that still comes in. in Why are we so worried about the protection of the cheesels? <laughs> <laughs> Because they only work if they're a complete circle, Nathan. If that gets broken, it's true. But it's ruined. But it's same burgery. as a burger, yeah. and that's in a loose packet. Yeah. There you go. That's an investigation. Get right onto that. Today's um, after you, around. After they're you, no, they're not. After you make your mayonnaise, get onto that. Um, yeah. Thanks, Melinda. Tracy's in Singleton. Hello. Hi. How are you going? Hi, Tracy. Tracy. Is there one product that you can't get at the moment that is really impacting your life? It is blues loose for the toilet. How, oh. how filthy are your <laughs> toilets, Tracy? <laughs> They're really, they are fairly clean, but I've got a rent inspection tomorrow, and yes. I usually have, I usually like make them all smell pretty and yes. extra nice. And but I've been to three shops on the weekend, yeah. went to three more shops yesterday afternoon, and there's none of that sort of stuff left on the shelves at all. So you've been to six retailers and not one single no, one yep. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's devastating, isn't it? Blue Lou, it is. It's it's quite funny um, because it looks like um. Uh, the uh, results of a Smurf having a big night out, yes. <laughs> <laughs> throwing up in your toilet. Um, it gives I, you somewhere to aim. I have to say, when That's we used to, when, no, when we used to um, uh, rent that, the blue loos were great because they would hide a dirty toilet bowl <laughs> oh, yeah. rather than just yeah. I don't yeah. know yeah. cleaning, cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. I want to talk about us. Trying to get to work this morning. Now we are of the understanding of right, and this is, and I think this is a safe thing to say, and I think it's fair. If it is a struggle for you to get to your workplace, there should be a law in place that says that you can go home. Well, yes. today it was not legally possible. No, nope. for us to get to work. No, it wasn't legally possible. So, I get um here uh, usually around four thirty in the morning, right? So I'm driving down Hay Street because all the streets around mm. here have got work happening here in Subiaco, especially along Rockaby Road mm. and Hay and stuff. And then I see this big arrow telling me that half the bloody road's blocked. So I get into the other lane, and as I'm approaching, I see detour. I can't get to where I am turning mm. from Hay Street onto Rockaby Road to get to Nova. So then I go around the detour and I think, okay, that's simple. I'll just go on to Rockaby Road and then go straight down to get yes. to our workplace. He's a think of this guy. Oh, Sean, I, I'm a solver, a problem solver. Mm-hmm. So then I get onto that road and the detour takes me back to where I was going mm. again. But guess what? He won't give up. I won't <laughs> give up, Sean. So then I tried a few different other alternatives and nothing was working and it kept on taking me back to Churchill Street and to where I saw a road worker standing there, this lovely woman. So I parked my car mm-hmm. and went over there and made sure I said hello very loudly so she knew she wasn't getting stabbed. Um, and I said, excuse me. And then she realised who I was. And I said, like, oh, I said, I would, um, we're just, I just want to find out how we can get to Nova because um, we need to work. Mm. And then she goes, okay, well, I'll just find out. And she gets on a walkie-talkie goes, Brian. Your dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's amazing. He's Why everywhere. didn't you just well, call him direct? Everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> Brian, uh, the Nova guys want to know how they can get to their car park. And then Brian goes, yeah, where's the car park? She goes, oh, it's just behind, it's on the corner of Hay Street and Rockaby Road and explained where it was. Behind the old the road dome. From the Regal. Yep. He goes, ah, it's not possible, mate. They're going to have to park their cars and walk down. And then she goes, yeah, you're going to have to park and walk down. I said, we can't. She goes, why? I said, well, we're in Subiaco. 
I said, if you leave your car for five minutes, they'll find you, <laughs> <laughs> let alone leaving it for five or six hours. It's not going to happen. So then the only way that we could end up getting to work is I went around the block and then you can you can drive out of Rockaby Road to Roberts Road. Yes, yes. You can. Right? So you can drive out there. But that's only on the um, on one side of the road. The, the way to yes, drive... Yes, you can drive north, but you can't yes, drive south. Can't drive south. And we needed to drive south. So the, the only way that we could mm. do that was to drive on the opposite side of the road, which is illegal. That, mm. That's the only cause that was the of only way we could that do we it. have. Natalie Locke. Can I say, Nathan Morris. when we all did that, was it a good feeling? Because it felt oh. like a big <laughs> I was ready. You know what? I was ready for someone to be standing there and saying, you, you shall not pass. <laughs> I was going to say, you shut your mouth. Well, <laughs> I was here first. I had an interaction with a chap who was uh, sort of manning the <laughs> one end of it. And uh, he got out and over, he was just sitting in his car. And I'm just, I just thought, I'll just sit here until somebody comes out. And he comes over. And he had a Southern Cross tattoo, Sean. On Ooh. his face. So when are you going on out? On his face. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to have, It's not it's the safest lost. time of day for a girl to be around. And then I'm having a conversation with a guy with a Southern Cross tattoo on his face. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, you can't get through. And I'm like, well, my workmate's done it. Yeah. I know he's done it. Yeah. And he goes, well, he didn't do it this from this end. And I'm like, okay, thanks for your help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nat. Nat driver, right? <laughs> Waving at him saying, oi, oi, oi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy Valentine's yeah. Day. I, I just think it's a real, I mean, I know that roadworks have to happen yes. um, and blah, blah, blah. But I just think it's really great for the um, for the, the city of Subiaco <laughs> to um, find another way of just keeping more people away. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan. Sean podcast. Well, as we know, the Super Bowl was on yesterday, watched by uh, 1. 1, uh, sorry, 117 it was, 117 million in the US, which is the highest one they've had Ooh. in, I think, about 20, 30 years. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it was. We saw a lot of the superstars who were there at the game. Um, big halftime entertainment. It was great. It was oh, actually it was really, really good. Visually fantastic. Yeah, it was. And, I, I um, thought, the, thought the last bit wasn't that great. You know, the last sing along that they had together, I think um, Dr. J. Dr. Dre led it, and I don't know, it didn't do much for me. Oh. The last sing-along that they had to get <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ended on a, because it was Eminem, and Mary J killed it, you know, the whole lot was happening, and then the end of it was just like, okay, I'm waiting for You're a right, they should end with the strongest sing-along. Oh, <laughs> Um, I do love the fact that Eminem dropped to one knee yeah. um, for the Black Lives Matters protest, in which they were wanting to do, and then in rehearsals was told by the officials that that you happening. can't. But yet, and Eminem look said how many you can't black tell me what to do. Up there and I know. Were up it's there. It's ridiculous. Like, it just, of course, you can't say on no top, on top of the to number of lineup. athletes as well. Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, there was a shortage of chicken wings over in the US because everybody was chowing down on their Super Bowl parties. Chicken Hilarious. wings. Hilarious. Really? Uh, what about mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> no, I believe they had mayonnaise. And there was a guy over there, and he's known as the Mattress King, and his name is uh, Mac Mc. McGinvey, or uh, let me see what his name is exactly. He's an entrepreneur, right? McGingvale. And he bet nine and a half million dollars on the Cincinnati Bengals to win so the he's match. So he's, he's done his dough. Money. Yeah, he's, he's uh, done he's his dough with the last play, essentially. Yeah, he's a noted big uh, better on sports um, matches. And generally, he goes for an underdogs because of the uh, the yes, because better of the difference, odds. better odds. And and the Bengals were in it right to the last seconds, actually, before they went down just by three points. But Nine and a half million. Well, well um, Drake had a one point seven million dollar bet in Bitcoin on the Rams to win. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, one point seven. Okay, that was yeah. about dollar fifty. So fifty yeah. percent on your money. Yeah. 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 About, about what? About eight hundred. Yeah. Just picked yeah. up eight fifty. Yeah. I mean, it's Not easy too money. Bad. I don't think I could bet anything ever over fifty dollars. No. Seriously, I'm like, risk averse. When I buy a lot, I don't buy anything more than like a twenty five slick pick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get like that But too. you buy it from your lucky guy. I know. Who hasn't <laughs> brought you any luck. <laughs> if I it's bet over 50. Time. <laughs> the, every time I bet over 50, I lose. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. The other thing that was on last night, so it was a big deal of a Super Bowl. It was great. The Rams winning their second ever Super Bowl. But last night, if you're watching the Winter Games, you would have seen our flag bearer, Laura Peel, who was competing in the aerials. Unbelievable stuff, actually. I was talking to Nat about it earlier on. When you got to the final itself and mm. you only have the one jump. One got, you got one shot at it. I was really surprised. I thought you'd get a yeah. couple. Yeah. No. 
Uh, I know when I when I relate it to when we're playing coits, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it, it is, is a lot of pressure. It is it's a lot of pretty pressure. much the same. And your life's on the line. Your similarly, life's on the line. in coits, yeah. When, when she went down the run, uh, down the uh, the ramp to then flip up and do all, of, she went so high, like she went into the yeah, universe. It is. She went so bloody it's high. It's terrifying. And she stick what the they do. Two hundred and fifty meters up they go. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, and and whilst on TV, you go, oh yeah, that's. Ridiculous, but in real life, it is just. It oh yeah, is it's super steep. steep. It yeah. is dead steep. Yeah. They get some serious case. Poor old Richo, who we're going to catch up with later. Well, I've got to ask him about this because he had to uh, interview Laura oh, afterwards. Tough. He was completely devastated. This is poor Laura. I guess at that point, I just had nothing to lose. So I wanted to hit my takeoff, which I kind of did. I could have stretched a little earlier, and then I just had a little bit too much rotation and couldn't put it down. Oh, oh, too much I rotation. Mean, so remember that so you got to get long it's when, so you're, when, you're, when you've got so high in yeah. the air. You've got to get really long. So she was hoping she'd stretch yeah. out a bit to kind of slow her down. Do you remember back in the day um, that show Quantum Leap um, where it was Scott Bakula and he would like suddenly come into somebody's body and then um, experience their life right from that point? I always think about that. What if suddenly you just enter yes. her body as she's as going she's down going that going ramp? <laughs> 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 you go flung off. What's happening? <laughs> Even the, the half pipe guys. Dead to a the half pipe guys, <laughs> when they are flipping around <laughs> that high five meters in the air, it's like, what is happening? It's quite late. late. How'd you find that? Oh, it's skipping. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's amazing stuff. Um, yeah, the half pipe's unbelievable. Oh. All of that stuff. Like they are literally risking spinal injury at yeah. every moment. The guy who won gold, actually, he was complaining about the du- judges who missed one of his moves in the oh, final. And, and said, I'm better than had, you thought I was. Well, he said he would have had it. If you watch the replay, he would have had the victory after his first run. So when he came to his second run, he had to keep pushing yes. it. And then he was worried that, he, you know, he could really hurt himself. That yeah. was the Japanese yeah. guy, yeah. 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 yeah? yeah, yeah, he was yeah. good. Yeah. When I hear repeats of our show, I always think, oh, why haven't you won an award? <laughs> Nathan, Matt and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.